Hey, this is kind of a pre-introduction, and today I'm going to show you how to create this kind of fun game. So I'm going to hit stop, and we're going to go ahead and start at the beginning. And it's basically these doors. And one of the things I forgot to mention on the tutorial real quick is that if you set the speed to a negative value, like these are, I think, 25 right now, if you set it to negative 25, the door will spin the other way. The faster you set these doors to spin, the harder the game is. So I have the door set. So this is kind of surprisingly challenging. I'm going to sneak through here as fast as I can without getting killed. <laughs> it's pretty fun, actually. This last door is the fastest. There, I won. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And then you could go on to another level with more stuff to do. So anyway, I'll show you how to do this. It'll take about a half hour. Go get a slice of pizza, some blueberry pie, ice cream, and beer. Hey, how's it going today? And I'm excited to bring you this tutorial on how to create your first fun game in Unreal Engine. There's a lot of steps involved. I mean, about maybe about 40. And so I hope to go as fast as possible without rushing. So we're here in Unreal Engine 5, and I'm just going to click Launch. Just takes a minute to load up. So far of all the games I've played around with, this one is actually kind of fun to play with. So I think it'll give you some ideas on creating it, other games of your own. Anyway, I'm just gonna call this Games 14, and we're gonna go into a, a blank project, no starter content, a blueprint, and just go create. It just takes a minute for it to load up. There's a lot of little gotchas along the way on this, so just be patient and I think it'll pay off for you. So this starts off with a, a so-called blank game, but the reason I like this is that it really what it does is it gives us a world that's already built. So we don't have to write all the code for this. We don't have to do any of the lighting. It's already set up for us. So it's taken a lot of, I mean, Unreal Engine really gives you a jump start on everything. So what we need though is we need a third person player and that code is already built for us. So all we have to do is come down here to add and go to add feature or content and go to third person and go add a project. So this will add all the code for a fully functional player controller, which would have taken a lot of code to do. And then you should need just to come over here to world settings. If you don't see world settings here, just come to your window and make sure that it's clicked. And then to activate the third person player, you just gotta come down here to third person player game mode and that'll launch it. So now if we hit play, We've got a fully functional character running around in the world. And actually, this could just be your game right here, and you could just call it the running man. <laughs> but there's a little more to it than that. So we're going to hit escape to get out of this. And the only problem that we have right now is that when the game starts, we don't really have a reference for where the player is going to actually start. So we want that. So what we do is come to this plus icon up here, the screen one, and go down to all classes and then we're going to type in player start and there it is and we're going to double click this now as soon as we click it we get this warning that says bad size and what we can do is click over here to select it and all we have to do is just lift this up out of the it's intersecting with some other geometry and it doesn't like that now we have this as a reference and if we look at this we can kind of see this blue arrow here is pointing the direction our character is going to be facing. So if I hit Alt and left click, I should be able to orbit around this player start. And I'm hitting the middle mouse button and just holding down and clicking right here just to kind of pan a little bit. And I'm hitting the scroll wheel. I'm holding Alt now. And I'm just trying to get a better perspective on my scene but the character will appear to be heading in this direction, facing off in this direction. So let's see if that's true. Yep, okay. So let me double check, hit Alt again. That's the direction he's gonna go. And why this is important is this is where we're gonna build our, our walls. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here to the plus icon again and go to shapes and go to cube and click on cube. And then if I'm on the cube over here in the outliner and here on the screen, if I hit the space bar, I can cycle through all my options. And I'm just going to stretch this out real fast. And this does not have to be exactly perfect. This is just to kind of, so I'm going to drag this wall up and make it kind of tall. 
I'm going to scroll out here a little bit. And now I'm on the cube, I can hit Alt and I can orbit around it a little bit. And maybe I don't want it so thick, so I'm going to just thin it up a little bit. And just basically get this wall, the scaling it and this and that, you can get it to where you want it. Again, I'm hitting Alt. You see some of it's beneath the surface, so I can hit the space bar and drag it up and get it, everything here kind of on the ground here. So hitting Alt again to orbit. And I can see where my player start is right down here. So I'm just going to click and move this down here because this is where the game is going to start. And then once I'm happy, hit Alt again to orbit in. Hit my scroll wheel to zoom in. And once I'm happy with where that wall is and how it's positioned, if I click on this green arrow here, whoops, it changed on me. I somehow it clicked off of my wall. So go back to the cube and hit the space bar. And if I hold down Alt and press, it automatically duplicates the wall for me, an exact copy of it. So that makes life very simple for us. And again, holding down Alt and scrolling in, this is kind of the quarters that our character will be going down. And I can just, you can play around, well, I accidentally created an extra wall, so I'm just going to delete that. So I meant just to click on that and drag, don't press Alt. So I was going to make this just maybe a little bit wider. Okay, and now that we got that done, holding down Alt again, I'm going to come around here. I'm going to press the middle mouse button and move up. Now I'm going to come in here and one last thing we're going to create is we're going to create a volume and it's going to be a trigger volume and it's going to come in right there and then I'm just going to drag this to the end here and I'm going to hit alt and cut, whoops, what happened there? It's moving around somehow. I'm trying to position this at the end of the box here so let me, I'm going to just hit alt now for some reason it must just be up in the I'm really off on my perspective here so let me hit space bar and just drag this down that's one thing that's weird in 3d space sometimes it's it's real easy to lose your perspective here so I'm going to click on this wall because for this cube because for some reason when I hit alt it's it's not letting me move like that, that cube so let me come back down here on the outliner and find that these are the kind of things that I run into. It's way up there in the sky. I don't know how it got way up there. So let me zoom out here. I don't know what in the world is going on there, how it got way up there. But I'm just zooming, hitting the scroll wheel to zoom out here. I just want this at the end of this. So hit Alt. Now I'm a little bit better. I don't know what was going on there, but you just got to play around and get this in the right position. It takes a little finagling to do it. It's almost too bad that there's not a uh, snapping to other objects functionality on here because it really does take some, as far as I'm concerned, some finagling. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and hit the space bar and make this mesh bigger. So I want this at the, the end of this. Hit space bar again and move it in. And this doesn't, has to, doesn't have to be perfect at all. I'm hitting Alt to orbit around it. And I'll scroll well kind of to move in. Maybe what I'll do is I'll go into the top view just to make sure that I'm where I need to be here. Yeah, right at the end of the walkway. Okay, let's take a look at it from the side. It looks like we're where we need to be. So let me go back into perspective. And I'm just double checking one last time. Pre clicking on the object and then just zooming around here. I'm actually clicked on Alt here. That green thing represents our mesh. So it looks like we've got it covered that it's right at the end of our quarter. So that took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're basically done with this part of everything. So this is basically our gameplay. If I hit play, there will be our character and I, and I can run through these two quarters. And when he gets to the end of this quarter, he's going to go through the mesh, which will be a trigger for something else. Okay, so we're going to escape out of that. Now what we can do, hopefully we'll get moving along here a little bit quicker. We've got our walls and our trigger volume. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the third person blueprint right here. 
and double click on this and we're going to dock this up here on the top so it's easy to navigate between all of our areas and then what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to create a event and it's going to be a keyboard event and it's just going to be from us clicking the number one and then off of this I'm going to just scoot this over a little bit I'm going to drag and I'm going to search for set whoops set collision enabled enabled mesh this one right here set collision enabled mesh and it's automatically connecting to our third person player whoops just trying to move that there and then we got to set the collision this is important to collision enabled query in physics and then we're going to drag off of this and we're going to search for set simulation physics mesh and then from here I'm just right clicking and dragging to move over and then off of here we're going to search for set physics blended oops blended weight mesh this one and this is going to make it appear as if our character is dying character is just going to collapse so we're going to hit one and hit enter on that we can hit compile and save and to test that this is working we can go into our project hit w hit play i mean click into the scene and hit one the character just collapses so we got that working that's fantastic so we hit escape to come out of that now we've got that done so now we're going to work on creating our walls our revolving doors of death or whatever so i'm going to click here i'm going to right click and i'm going to create a new blueprint actor and i'm going to call this bp doors of death and then what we're going to do is we're going to click into this and we're going to oops what happened there we clicked in the wrong thing okay so this is our doors of death i don't want this game mode i, I don't know, accidentally clicked on that and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a door and now there's a gotcha coming up here and i'll show you what that is in just a second so we're going to click, click on the default root scene and we're going to go to add and we're going to go to cube and this is going to be our door even though it looks like a cube right now but the one thing i want to draw your attention to is our orientation here so if i click on here let me just click on this door right here this cube I can click on details and if I click on the the door itself we should be able to see our this thing here our, our widget and you notice how the green is going this way and the blue is going up so this is our I believe it's weird how they have this I think it's XYZ but the Z is going up and the Y is going to the side so when we go into our door here notice the green is facing us so we have to come down here to this gizmo and turn our scene like that so that we're properly in the same orientation otherwise this will this will drive you crazy because you'll be resizing this and it won't be sizing the same as in here so what we're going to do right now is now that we got our orientation set correctly is we're going to go ahead and size this to be like a door so it's easiest just to come over here to scale and we can make the door thin and we will resize this later but we're just giving kind of a, an approximation of how our door will be it doesn't have to be thick and maybe a little taller something like that and we can resize this and we will resize this later and just make sure that the location is on the zero the origin is on the zero otherwise it won't be revolving properly okay and then once our door is made and we you can change the color and all that later we're going to come in here we're going to add what's called a box collider and double click this should did it come on let me try that again box collision there it is and what we want to do here is just resize this so we, we're going to come over here and just make sure we're on the box and just resize it to roughly the size of the door but maybe just a little bit outside of the door 
So for this particular game, we actually want it pretty close to the door, but outside of the boundaries of the door. So just something like that. So if I hit Alt, I can, we can see what we got there, okay? And then we can just go compile and save that. So now what we can do is come over here on the side and come down to where it says on component begin overlap. And this is basically going to be a trigger to activate our door. So what we do is we're going to drag off of here where it says other actor and search for cast to third person character. And this is just basically a test to make sure whatever's interacting with our door is actually our third person character. We don't want it interacting with any other element. So this basically just assures that our collision object's only going to collide with our third person character and nothing else. So just think of it as a test. I did a whole video about cast to. There's actually quite a bit more to it than you might think. We got that set up and make sure that this is other actors hooked up to object and that's all set up. Now what we want to do is we want to call we want to call to that function that we just made over here, but right now we don't have it by it by the right name. We just have it activated by a trigger. So this is our function and over here we're going to call to that function by name. But right now it's being called only by this. So what we can do is click off of this and right click and search for custom event. Add custom event right here. And I can zoom in here with my scroll wheel. And I'm going to just rename this die. And then we're just simply going to plug this in to here. And then we're going to compile this and save that. And so we've completed this function. And this is the call to this function. This is how we'll call to this function. We come over here and now we're going to call to that function. So we can pull out here and just type in die. And this is our function call. See where it says call function? And so we can compile and save this. So what should happen, we can test this to see that it works, and hopefully it does, is if we drag this onto the scene, our door, it's not animated. We still have to animate the door and there's still a couple things we need to do. But if I hit play, it should be that when I go over to that door, this mannequin falls over as if it's dead. So let's see. Yep, perfect. Okay, so we're on our way. So I'm going to hit escape and get out of there. So all we really have left to do is animate our doors to spin them around and place them down the corridor and then just finish up with a display. We're really on our way, believe it or not. So now what we want to do is go back into our doors of death here and we're going to create our animation. And our animation is going to be driven actually by what's called a tick. And a tick is basically the heartbeat of the game. So every frame this event is being called. So it's something that's happening constantly in time. So what's going to be driving our spinning doors is actually this event tick. So we type in event tick. It's a funny name because I think of tick as like it's something that gets on you and draws your blood. So once we, we have the event tick drawn we're going to this is all about animating our doors to spin so I'm gonna click off of this and I'm gonna search for add actor local rotation this right here and then I'm gonna drag off of our Delta rotation and if you don't understand what all this is you can look all this up online in the manuals later so we're gonna drag off of this and we're gonna look for something called make rotator so like I said, this is about making our doors rotate. And we're going to make them rotate along the Z axis, which is our up and down axis. And now we're going to drag off of this, and we're going to search for something called multiply. Double click that. And then we're going to plug this into our Z axis. Now what we want to do is to be able to customize these for each instances of our door to set the speed. So we need a variable for that. And we're going to click here, and we're going to call this spin factor and we're going to set it to a float value and then we're going to compile and save it and then we can just drag it onto the scene and we can just say get it and we're going to plug it in here now over here we can set an initial value and let's just set 25 for right now that'll make the door spin slow 
hunter will make it spin pretty fast and actually be hard to get past it so that's going to be some of the fun funness of the game and i can compile and save this and that should control our doors so if we come back into our scene now the only thing we have to do is uh, size our doors so let me come over here and i'll hit let me find player start that's an easy way to get your bearings here Let's click on player start and hit f and this puts us right where we need to i don't need this door anymore so i'm going to click on it and delete it that was just for a test and now i've got this I can just drag it onto my scene. And obviously, just looking at it, that door is way too small. So if I hit Alt, I can orbit around. We got a little, a lot of stretching to do. I guess these walls are bigger than I thought. But if I hit play, let's see what happens. See how the door is rotating? And it should be, if I come up on the door, the character dies. Yeah. So all we have to do, believe it or not, and thanks for sticking along this far, hitting escape to get out of the game is just resize these doors and put them down the hallway and adjust the speed and rotation on them so we're almost about maybe about 10 more minutes to go hopefully so if you want to go get a donut or something what we're going to do is i'm going to come back in here to the doors and i'm going to go to the viewport and then i'm just going to free this up for right now not that one sorry about that i'm just going to pull this off so i can see this have access to the scaling on here click on the door i want to have access to the scaling and then i'm going to look on here and then what i'm going to try to do i should be able to rescale this in real time so let's see so that's making it thicker making it wider i don't have a lot of real estate here so let me uh, see and then here on the z let me uh, pull this up let me back out a little bit. So this is the more kind of tedious part of it right here is just getting this door scaled, right? And it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge, but just something like that. I just want to get it about the right size so the character can't get through the sides. And then maybe drag it up here. I'll drag it up there, but let me scale it up here on the Z a little bit more. It's a big door. I think it's kind of fun to have it as a big door. Maybe that's too big. Well, that's about right. Okay, so we'll leave it at that then. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and compile and save this. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this door. Now I'm just going to go ahead and let me just click uh, player start. Hit alt. Try to zoom out here a little bit. And then I'm just going to pull these doors into this corner. And now... You could, you know, there's endless possibilities, honestly, with this, but I'm just going to pull out one door there and pull out another one, maybe there. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I'm just roughly placing them. I'll go in and adjust them. I'll just put four doors for right now. You can imagine that you could just put endless series of doors. And now I'm going to hit on this first door, hold Alt, and kind of navigate down in here and I'm just gonna position a little bit better here in the middle and just straighten it up and just keep going forward get the next one bring it up back up back out a little bit here go there go to the next one and you can also control it over here. It might be easier if we just do it over here. It actually seems like I have the doors kind of close. can hardly see the bottom. And then we just have one last one to do. And I'm just using these controls over here on the right. And bringing the door up like that. Now the fun thing about this, this game is that if we go like let's say the doors are all here right so what we can do is on this first door we have the option if we click on general we have the option to adjust the oops the first door general let me see we should have the option to actor oh you know what i did wrong sorry about this 
if I go back in here to the third person character, I lost I lost one of my assets here. I forgot to do something when I set my variable. So if I go on to this one, I think it is, which is the one that has, it's, it's not this one, it's, I'm sorry about this, the doors of death here. Hold on, I'm gonna dock it back up. If I go on the event graph, this variable, what I did was I forgot to set it as a, let's see, I'm on the spin factor. I forgot to set it as instant edible and expose on spawn. Sorry about that. And now I'll compile it again. So now if I come back in here, you can see on this first door, I can set the, sp the speed. Well, if I think I have to be on general. Spin factor, that's right. So the first door, let's see, this is the first door. I'm gonna set it at 25. The second door, I'm gonna set it a little faster, 40. The third door, I'm gonna set it at 50. So it gets harder as you go. And the fourth door, I'm gonna put it at 100. But now if we hit play, this is the, how the game should work. So it's actually not that easy to do that one. <laughs> I mean, the faster these doors spin, the harder it gets. And that last door I see need to reposition it. So that's, oh, I got slammed at the end. So let me let me go back here into the game. So this, I don't know how I got that last door off. So let me just hit Alt and come around the back and just push that door in a little bit more and down a little bit more. There we go. And then once you get to this level, you can finagle with the whole thing, right? So Alt, and those are our, it's still off a little bit. There we go. I actually can see it a little bit better from up here. So you can reposition these and get these spinning a little bit more even. You can really make this a, a fun, fun game. And then of course, by adjusting the speeds, it can be virtually impossible to get through here. So the very last thing we're gonna do is just set up a a display for a message at the very, very end that we've achieved our level. So to do that, we're going to go into the, well, let's go in here. We'll right click here and we're going to go to user interface and go to widget blueprint. We're going to call, call user widget and we're going to just call this my display and we're going to double click on this. We've done another tutorial on how to do these, but we're just going to go to canvas and pull that down here. And then we're going to just type in, this is just quick and dirty. We're going to just type in text drag this out, drag it out like here, and go like this, and then click on text block, and here, so I, I'm just gonna type in achievement unlocked, get yourself a beer. Okay, and then if I click under here, under font, I can resize that up, not quite that big, but maybe, like maybe right about, is that 96, maybe 75? No, how about 50? Okay, that looks good. And then we're just gonna put this here. Drag this down here and lock that there. And we're gonna compile and save that, okay? So next we're gonna do, the last thing we're on that, we're really on the last stretch here. We're gonna come in here to our main game and we're gonna go to that trigger volume that we made at the very beginning. And while we're clicked on that, we're gonna come up here and go to the level editor, open the level editor. We can delete these and then we can right click and we right here on the very top where it says add event we're going to go collision and add on actor begin overlap it's right there and then from here we're going to drag off oh i can drag off from the other actor and we're going to do the cast to again to make sure that this only applies to our character if some other character goes through this the doors they won't get this message so cast to third person character right here it's just kind of our screening test. And then here we're gonna to go to create widget, widget here. Class is gonna be our, my display that we just created. And then we're gonna drag off of here. And the last thing is we're gonna go add to viewport here. And just make sure that's connected into that. Let's go compile and save. And save all that. 
Now, there's one easy way to check this real quick, and I realize this has gone a little longer than I thought it would. Like I said, there's literally a lot of moving parts to this. If we hit play, the cheat would be on this is if I come around the back here, and of course you could build a wall around this thing too, but if I walk through here, see, it's the achievement unlocked. So to prevent that from cheating, that cheat right there, you would just build a wall around the backside. And believe it or not, that's it. And so I really appreciate you sticking out, sticking this out. I think this is a really fun game and it's actually not that easy. And I think it leads to a lot of possibilities. So take care, have a great day, and I hope you found this helpful.